Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Transformers Lore. If you remember the last Transformers Lore episode, I said that uh, the production quality for the month of July is going to be a bit low because I don't have much time because I'm moving to Japan this month. Um, so we're just trying to get these out. I could just have not made any Transformers Lore videos, but I figured you guys wanted to see these. Um, it's better than nothing, I guess. Um, but... Last episode, we talked about the Decepticon occupation of Earth in the first IDW Hasbro universe, the greatest tragedy that happened to Earth in that history of that universe. Now we're going to talk about the second largest tragedy that struck Earth in the IDW Hasbro universe, and that is the destruction of Nan Zhao. Nan Zhao is a fictional country, but existed in the IDW universe, uh... Where it shows up on the map, if you read the comics, is inconsistent over where it is. The closest thing you get is to, like, the northern Burma area. Um, it is a stand-in for uh, Burma, I guess, although I think Burma also exists anyway. <laughs> so, But uh, Nanjiao exists sort of northern Burma, south of China, sort of near India, that sort of deal. And it was known as a dictatorship. It was oppressive, and it was corrupt. Uh, Nanjiao was also part of the Golden Triangle, where uh, I believe it's opium. Uh, I could be wrong about the drug, but it's definitely part of the drug trade in that region of Southeast Asia. Uh, it's, it's prone to, you know, fighting. There are resistance to the government. Uh, then there are gangs and drug lords and stuff. Not a real good place to be. I just realized I don't remember what year this happens in. It might be 2011. Or 2012. Just like the last episode, I'm going to put a timeline in uh, the description below because I can't remember what year this happened off the top of my head. But at some point, though, um, a little boy is born in what we can assume is Nanjiao. A boy is born in the Golden Triangle. It doesn't specifically say which part of the Golden Triangle he's born in, but he has a big grudge against Nanjiao, so... Maybe he was born in Nanjiao. He was born on the battlefield. Uh, his mom was giving birth during a little drug confrontation. And I think it's an opium field, a poppy field. But uh, he get, he's born. His father dies as he's being born because he gets shot. Uh, and as a little boy, he pretty much spends, spends most of his childhood, you know, working as a child soldier, uh, working with the drug trade, stuff like that. Eventually, he makes contact with Cobra and joins up with them. He takes the name of Crake. Now, Crake is this hardened, like, soulless, uh, you know, imagine the, the children who lived during Pol Pot's Cambodia years. Um, just a child soldier with no heart who just has rage in him, but he's a very effective killer. He's been doing the whole killing thing since a young age. Uh, he joins up with Cobra and eventually, Cobra Commander gets a bullet in his head. Cobra Commander dies, gets assassinated by a G.I. Joe agent named Chuckles. And uh, how things work in Cobra is, when the Cobra Commander is dead, they hold an election. And by election, I mean a battle royale. I mean a little bit of that Fortnite. People who want to be Cobra Commander have to go out and, in the case of the Cobra Civil War that happened then... Kill as many G.I. Joe members as possible. So you have all the key members of Cobra going out to kill as many members of G.I. Joe as possible. This happens in an, event, in an event called Cobra Civil War. Long story short, Crake ends up being on top, although he does a little bit of political maneuvering uh, during that whole time. So Crake ends up becoming the Cobra Commander. Throughout this entire time in the IDW universe, Cobra has been operating in the shadows. They, they've been operating in the shadows since like the time of the Roman Empire. So, Cobra's been in the shadows. Crake says, uh, let's do something different. Let's become a United Nations recognized state. <laughs> and everyone's like, all right, how do we do that? He's like, we gotta take over a country. And the Cobra's like, all right, let's take over a country. Let's do it. Let's get it. And Crake, I mean, Cobra Commander, I guess we'll call him now, uh, says, all right. Let's take over Nanjiao, uh, because I have a bone to pick with him. And Cobra's like, okay, I guess. There are some Cobra members who are uh, have second thoughts about the whole, okay, now we're going out into the public, you know, idea. They don't really like that. But, um, Crake 
Cobra Commander brings Cobra out of the shadows for the first time in its thousands of years of history. It starts off, I believe, with tanks invading, his tanks invading Nanjiao. But these tanks invade Nanjiao, and Cobra Commander gives a speech, the world knows Cobra exists. G.I. Joe is also operating as a secret organization at this time, as a secret elite American fighting force. They're also secret. Every member of G.I. Joe is legally declared dead before they join G.I. Joe, you know. But G.I. Joe has been having a little bit of a struggle with Cobra uh, before the whole Nanjiao incident, and now they're like, okay... Now Cobras come out of the shadows. Oh boy, they're invading a country. They launch this invasion. What they do is they ally with some rebels in Nanjiao who want to overthrow the government. So they say, all right, rebels, join us, Cobra, and we can overthrow the government, and peace and stability will reign in Nanjiao. Doesn't go so well. Ultimately, the, the international response to the invasion of Nanjiao is mixed, because at Yes, Cobra is this terrorist organization that appeared out of nowhere and is taking over a country. But on the other hand, Nanjiao is like, like North Korea in the sense that nobody likes it. So you don't see a big international response. United Nations forces are deployed alongside GI Joe. Uh, I know that uh, South Korean forces were part of the UN group. I think Norwegian forces were too, and I think maybe Thai forces. I can't remember that well. I, there are certainly South Koreans, um, but G.I. Joe works alongside them and they fight against Cobra. Cobra deploys the battle android troopers during this time, these really powerful robots, uh, although one of them was deployed during the Cobra Civil War, um, but they were really mass scale deployed in the Nanjiao War. So G.I. Joe fights them off, and they're really having a struggle with this whole war because the Cobra Vipers are pretty powerful. Uh, Snake Eyes goes AWOL, and Snake Eyes is like G.I. Joe's best fighter because uh, Snake Eyes sees Storm Shadow, and he goes off on his own little quest with Storm Shadow, abandoning G.I. Joe and possibly causing the mission to fail. Um, Snake Eyes does that a lot in the IDW universe. Um... What Cobra does as they take over the country, Cobra Commander personally meets with diplomats and heads of states of India and China. He tells them, don't worry, your assets will be protected. We don't, we're not going to spill over and invade your country, yada, yada, yada. So he, Cobra's establishing diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China and India, which is a big deal. And he's like, once we get this territory, we have a UN seat. Uh, they also start to smuggle out a lot of Nanjiao's historical artifacts, uh, and Cobra Commander also destroys a lot of the drug fields in Nanjiao he, to send a signal that I'm not going to participate in this drug trade. Which is also poetic because Cobra Commander's whole life was defined by this drug trade that he's destroying, he's wiping it out. It very much is that he has a grudge with this country. But that's not all. What he wants to do is he wants to wipe Nanjiao off the map. Because he just has so much bad feelings for the place. G.I. Joe fights and fights and they try their hardest. But ultimately, Cobra Commander brings in the nukes. Boom. The entire country is nuked. I'm not talking about like the key cities were nuked. The entire country is essentially carpet bombed with nuclear missiles. Which turns an entire country into a nuclear crater. G.I. Joe has to pull out, the United Nations has to pull out, Cobra technically owns Nanjiao? I say technically because nobody lives there, um, but uh, it's also inconsistent in the series because after this, Cobra Commander will be like, we still need UN recognition and to do that we need territory, so let's go buy an island. And it's like, but don't, don't you own the husk of Nanjiao or something? It's weird. <clears throat> they recycle the whole Cobra wants to be a UN state thing a lot. But, um... Whether or not Cobra got United Nations recognition is kind of fuzzy, kind of cloudy as to whether or not that happened. But G.I. Joe was defeated, they pull back, and the whole country is dead. An entire country wiped out. That's why this is the second largest tragedy to strike the Earth in the IDW universe since the Decepticon occupation. 
Uh, which, by the way, the Nanjiao nuking stuff happens, like, one year after the Decepticons leave, if not in the year the Decepticons leave. You can see the timeline below in the description. So, yeah, not long after that, Cobra Commander's like, all right, I'm a legitimate state now. I'm going to expose G.I. Joe as something that exists. Hey, America, your government has been using this elite military force and deploying into other countries without really much any permission uh, because nobody's allowed to know about them, and which leads to a lot of protests on their base, which is funny because relatively at the same time as when it's announced that... Uh, the American organization Skywatch, which I think is a United Nations organization at this time, but based out of America. Skywatch is operating with uh, with Transformers, so there's protests there. So imagine being an American citizen during this time when you're learning your government is not only working alongside Cybertronians that were, from your perspective, were behind the largest tragedy of mankind, but also had this secret elite fighting force that they were sending and breaking international laws with and spending your tax money on. It's a very interesting time where both the idea, where both the G.I. Joe and Transformers storylines have these protests going on. But yeah, the nuking of Nanjiao, one of the greatest events in the IDW universe, led to people distrusting G.I. Joe, led to G.I. Joe losing funding. It's, uh... It marked sort of the dying point of G.I. Joe, because from that point on, they're fighting for uh, money status. They're fighting to get a budget. Um, but yeah, that's the New Kingdom Nan Joe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you have not yet. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Join the Discord server. Follow me. Uh, subscribe to the Lazy Koalas, where I do the Lazy Koalas podcast with my friends. And yeah, leave your comments below. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Brrr!